G'day, I'm James. Here's a very interesting puzzle, alleged to be an interview question at some high-tech companies. It's this one, the gender balance puzzle. It goes as follows. 100 couples decide to start their own community. Each couple will bear or adopt children one at a time and will stop when they first have a boy. So for example, one couple might first have a girl, wonderful. They'll have a girl, fabulous. They'll have a girl, brilliant. They'll have a boy, fabulous, but they'll stop there. As soon as they have a boy, they stop. A second couple might have a girl, grand, then a girl, fabulous, and then a boy, wonderful, but they'll stop there. A third couple might have just a boy right away, they'll stop. So 100 couples will do this, keep bearing or adopting children until they have a boy. And the final question is, when done, what percentage of the community's children do we expect to be girls? So assume we're like having a boy or a girl is like flipping coins, a so 50% chance, 50% chance of each. We'll just go with that assumption. So if 100 couples were to do this process, on average, how many girls, what percentage of girls do we expect to be amongst the children's, the community's children? All right, so I'm going to do, actually put up 100 pieces of data on the board right now. You can watch me. I should be flipping a coin as I do this, or pretend I'm flipping a coin, but I just want all the data so we see what's going on. So here it goes. Here comes 100 couples, three done, another 97 couples to go. Whoa, so we will end up with some data like this. Obviously, I just made this up. I think I lost count. That might not be 100 data points. But we will have 100 couples, each bearing or adopting children, each stopping as soon as they have a boy. So we're asking now, here's a community of children, 100 couples having all their children. What percentage of girls do we expect amongst this picture of data like this? And right now, it seems overwhelming, impossible to know how to, how to think through. But I'm going to advise you, just go for a little walk right now. Pause this video. Go for a walk. Think about this data, how can you actually organize it to be a more systematic way that might reveal a clever way to think through this puzzle. All right, so I'm going to pause the video and give you a chance to think, and I'll see you back soon. All right, a clever way to think through this problem is actually be much more organized than how you list your data. Rather than a splattering of data across the board like this, put all the data in a list. And then it's thinking, instead of thinking about families which are rows, girl, 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 boy, girl, girl, boy, boy, girl, boy, and so on, think of columns of children. For example, here are all the oldest children in the family, all the first childs. And if you think about it, if it's a 50% chance of having a girl, 50% of having a boy, what's the chance that a couple's first child is a boy or a girl? 50%. So you expect half of these uh, children that are an oldest child to be girls. And then now go to the next set of data. Look at all the second children in the family. What's the probability that a second child of the family is a girl? Well, it's going to be a half. So we expect half the second children to be girls and the other half to be boys. And look at all the data of all the third children. Now, not every family has a third child, but amongst all the data that has a third child, we expect half to be girls and half to be boys. And of all the data that has a fourth, all the families have a fourth child, so my data's not here long enough, we expect half to be girls and half to be boys and so on. So actually, in this data, this way, range this way, we expect half of the values of the letters in each column to be G for girl and the other half to be B for boy. So then I can say, oh, if half of all the oldest children are girls, and half of the second oldest children are girls, and half of all the third oldest children are girls, and half of all the fourth oldest children, children are girls, so I'm getting tongue tied, we expect that, oh, overall, half the children in this community are girls, and the other half are boys, on average, on average. This is like coin flipping, remember, so you won't probably see exactly half, but we expect half. We had like lots of examples of lots of hundred different couples. On average, they'll have half boys, half girls, and there's no gender imbalance at all. Which is interesting, because if you think about this a little bit further, every couple has one boy, has exactly one boy. So we know there's going to be exactly 100 boys, because they stop when they have a boy. Which means, on average, if this sort of experiment to go on in many different communities, we expect, again, half of the community's children to be girls. The number of girls we expect is also to be 100. That is, we expect every couple to basically be like this one. On average, every couple has one girl and one boy. Now, the thing is, the oldest child will always be a girl. You'll never have a boy as a younger child. But we do expect, on average, to be gender balance going on for this community after all. We will we'll see exactly 100 boys, and on average, we will see 100 girls. Wow.
Beautiful, beautiful. And I love this change of perspective. So thinking row-wise for data, just change your perspective to column-wise, and so a whole new way of thinking comes back. And that's a lovely, lovely technique in mathematics. Range your column in a data, you range your data in sort of a table, sorry, look at columns, look at rows, and see the same data from two different perspectives and look what comes out. Beautiful stuff.